Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10s, and in the video today, the top 10 ridiculous ways to spend money in Japan. Got some extra cash and you don't know where to spend it? Then you should definitely visit Japan. The land of the rising sun offers more bang for your buck than any other country on the planet. Whether you're looking for something unique to eat or want a crazy way to spend the day, if you've got enough money, Japan has got you covered. Number 10. Hang out in a cat cafe. There are two kinds of people in this world, those who hate cats and those that love them. Fortunately for felines, Japan is one of the most cat-friendly nations on Earth. Japanese citizens love spending time with the four-legged furballs, but there's one major problem. Unless they're married, have kids, and live in a condo, most folks can't own pets. Japanese landlords are pretty darn strict and won't allow cats in their apartments. So, well, what's a young animal lover to do? Well, they would visit a cat cafe, of course. While the first cat cafe appeared in Taiwan in the late 90s, these kitten clubs have taken Japan by storm. Today, there are close to 150 cafes across the country, and they're the perfect place for stressed out office workers hoping to relax with their favorite animals. Cat cafes keep anywhere from 12 to 24 felines on staff, and while there are a few purebreds here and there, most are mixed breeds. Customers spend their time sipping coffee, relaxing at tables or on sofas, and waiting for the kittens to come visit. Some people even sketch or take pictures of the cats. But flash photography is strictly forbidden, as is waking a sleeping cat. Cat. cat cafes attract people from all walks of life. Tourists, office workers, and businessmen all stop by to play with kitties. Most people spend about an hour and a half in the cafe, but some people spend six hours to an entire day there, some people even taking a day off work to visit a cat cafe. Obviously, this can get pretty pricey. The Neko no Mise Cafe charges $1.50 for every 10 minutes, and at the Calico, customers pay $9 for the first hour and then $2 for every 15 minutes after that. Still, if you yearn for feline affection and can't own a pet, the cat cafe is probably worth every penny. Number 9. Buy a clone. Have you ever thought to yourself, I wish there was a mini me? Well, if you visit Tokyo's clone factory, your Dr. Evil dreams might just come true. Of course, this new you, though, it might be a little inanimate. Unfortunately, the factory hasn't discovered the secret of creating an actual clone yet, but they've come up with the next best thing. If you're willing to part with $1,300 to $1,750, these techno wizards can conjure up a doll that bears your exact likeness. The process involves a lot of digital cameras and a 3D printer. After a client sits in a chair, she has a picture taken with multiple cameras, each one positioned at a different angle. When the photo shoot is finished, the technicians whip up a digital map of the customer's head and print it onto the plaster that soon transforms into the head of a smiling and much too lifelike doll. The Clone Factory's creations are extremely popular, with brides hoping to memorialize their wedding day in 3D form. Of course, if you want to release your inner geek, you can deck out your doll in anime attire or stormtrooper armor. Afterwards, you can take your doll home and and creep out your friends with the 20-inch version of you sitting up on your mantle and smiling at everyone for eternity. Number 8. Send your stuffed animal on vacation in the 2001 French hit Amelie, the eponymous heroine swipes her father's garden gnome and sends it on a trip around the world, having a flight attendant photograph the little guy in front of famous landmarks. In Japan, Sono Azuma will do the exact same thing, only she charges a small fee and works with stuffed animals. Azuma manages the crazy yet cute travel agency known as Unagi Travel. For $45, she'll escort teddy bears plus sheep and cotton-filled dogs around Tokyo, taking their snapshots in front of places like the Tokyo Tower and the Senso G Temple in Asakusa. For $55, she'll give the toys a VIP tour of Japanese hot springs, though chances are pretty good the dolls don't actually spend much time in the water. And Azuma even offers her services to folks outside of Japan. She runs an English language website for clients in America and Europe, where clients can consider purchasing tours of Kyoto for $95, Kumano Kodo for $55, and an enigmatic mystery tour, which is $35, and there are no beetles involved. During the trip, she keeps her clients up to date on their animals' whereabouts via Facebook, and when the trip is over, she mails the toys and photos back home, free of charge. While Azuma's business sounds a bit, well, bizarre, it's actually a source of comfort for many people. For example, her tours have helped people struggling with the loss of family members. Seeing their dolls traveling around Japan has actually lifted their spirits and helped them deal with their grief. Even more impressively, Azuma has inspired people to seize the day and make their lives extraordinary. She tells one story about a woman who suffered an illness that affected her ability to walk. At first, she was too depressed to go to therapy, but after she saw pictures of her toys traveling across Tokyo, she decided she'd visit those places herself and regains the use of her limbs. Ultimately, Unagi travel is a bit of innocent fun and an inspiration to people who've given up hope of traveling themselves. 
Number 7. Hire a friend for a day Feeling lonely? Well, quite a few people in Japan have the blues too. In fact, over a million citizens suffer from hikikomori, an extreme form of loneliness where people lock themselves in their bedrooms and cut off all communication with friends and family. While most Japanese aren't that lonely, many have trouble meeting new people. And this is where rent-a-friend agencies come in handy. Business like Hagamashi Tai, or I Want to Cheer You Up, they hire out actors you'll take on almost any role, from boyfriend to best man. For example, fake friends will show up at weddings and pretend to be buddies with the bride or groom. One single mum hired a guy to attend sports day at her children's school, posing as their uncle, and one envious woman rented out a phony admirer to make her lover jealous. Similarly, Austin Rental fills a very specific niche. The company's name translates to Old Guy Rental and hires out a grand total of two men. Founder and fashion expert Takanobi Nishimoto, 46, and retired baseball player Miko Sendo, who's 65. For $10 an hour, these older gents will escort clients to shops, play games, and spend the day talking and offering advice. While Austin Rental might sound a bit strange, their services are purely platonic, and if nothing else, they help lonely people get out and about and make more human connections. Number 6. Bathe in a wine-filled spa the Hakone Kawaikan Unison isn't your average hot spring. Located outside of Tokyo, the Unison Spa Resort is only open 12 days a year, but it does draw a crowd. In addition to themed spas like the ancient Roman baths, the resort offers unusual pools filled with liquids that most of us usually think of as beverages. For example, one emerald-colored pool is full of green tea, which is supposedly good for your skin. Visitors who want something a bit stronger might slip into the coffee spa and relax in the biggest cup of joe on the planet. Employees actually brew the coffee in pots and then roll it out to the pool in barrels. Of course, if you want an adult drink, there's the sake spa, which allegedly gets rid of wrinkles. Strangely, there's a ramen bath, which has plenty of pepper and pork broth, but no actual noodles. However, the most popular pool is the Red Wine Spa, all of which flows from a giant Merlot bottle. And if you ever decide to visit Unison, drop by on Valentine's Day when the resort offers a sticky chocolate bath. Sweet. Number 5. Hire a Fake Priest Christianity isn't all that popular in Japan. While 77% of Americans and nearly 60% of Britons identify with the faith, only a measly 1% of Japanese believe in Jesus Christ. And that's what makes Japanese weddings so incredibly weird. Nearly 90% of nuptials are done in a traditional Christian fashion, complete with white dresses, Ave Maria, and most importantly, fake priests. The fascination with Western weddings started in the 1980s when millions of Japanese citizens watched celebrities like Princess Diana take their vows on TV. Since then, the number of Christian weddings has skyrocketed. Only most of the priests officiating are just white guys from the US and Europe. Of course, there are actual Japanese priests, but there are three reasons they don't preside over most ceremonies. Firstly, there simply aren't enough pastors to show up at every event. Secondly, most native priests aren't crazy about this trend because most of these weddings don't actually actually involve Christianity. Couples are more concerned with image rather than scripture, so religious themes are glossed over. Thirdly, most people don't want Japanese priests, as many feel they aren't authentic. After all, if you're going to have a Western wedding, you want a Westerner to run the show, right? Sensing a golden opportunity to make quick cash, bridal companies started hiring out native English speakers to work as priests, none of who have any religious training. In fact, many, they aren't even Christians. All that matters is that they know Japanese, can read a few token verses, and wrap things up in 20 minutes or less. For less than half an hour of acting, fake priests can make as much as $120, according to a 2006 article. Of course, Japanese couples aren't just paying the preachers, they're paying the churches as well. Quite a few hotels in Japan have Christian-style chapels, and you can even find sanctuaries in strange spots like supermarkets. So it's a bit of a bizarre trend, but I mean, the couple they get their dream wedding, and the priest gets to make a few bucks. Everybody goes home pretty happy. Number 4. Buy a fake finger if you're a criminal The fake finger industry caters to a very unique clientele. This would be members of the Japanese mafia, also known as the Yakuza. So why would gangsters need fake fingers, you ask? Well, it has to do with a bloody underworld ritual known as Yubitsume. If a mobster offends his superior, there's only one way to atone. He has to chop off the last joint of his pinky. If he screws up again, he gets chopped off at the next joint, and he just works further down the hand as he keeps screwing up. It is believed that this tradition stems back to the days of the samurai, when an amputated finger meant a warrior couldn't wield his sword properly and had to rely on his master for protection. Today, it's a sign of criminal activity, and if a gangster leaves the mob, he'll have a really hard time getting an honest job thanks to his stubby nubs. 
That's where people like Shintaro Hayashi and Yakauko Fukushima come in. Both Hayashi and Fukushima make prosthetic body parts, usually for accident victims or breast cancer patients. However, as the government cracks down on the gangs, people like Hayashi and Fukushima are getting more and more business from Japan's criminals. Some prosthetic makers, like Fukushima, only provide fake fingers for retired gangsters hoping to start over. Others, like Hayashi, are less choosy and will provide duplicate digits for mobsters who want to keep their identities a secret while at public events. Fake fingers can run anywhere from $1,400 to $3,000. While they might be pricey, but there's a lot of craftsmanship involved in these things. Made out of silicon, the fingers look 100% realistic. They're also unique to each person, and each finger looks like a specifically crafted extension of the digit. They also curve in such a way that the wearer can grasp items without actually moving his mock appendages. Some gangsters even buy multiple fingers to match the seasons, lighter tan for winter and darker for summer. They also often come back to have these prosthetics repainted. It's certainly a lucrative business, and it's the only time that gangsters don't mind getting the finger. Number 3. Dine on Dirt Japan is home to quite a few freaky restaurants like the Alcatraz ER, a hellish prison hospital, and Alice of Magic World, and maybe you could guess the theme on that one. However, Ne Quites Paz stands apart from its gimmicky cousins thanks to its boxer-turned-chef Toshiro Tanabe. A Gaelic gastronomist, Tanabe runs a really classy joint and has a flair for French food. Not only that, he's constantly searching for ways to transform food into art, and that's what inspired his craziest creation yet. For $110 per person, a quit Paz serves a full course meal with the special ingredient of dirt. The idea of consuming soil might not sound appealing, but do rest assured, Tanabe uses only the best. It comes from a company called Protoleaf, an organization that goes to countries like Sri Lanka in India and digs 10 meters below the ground to find the real primo soil. Afterwards, they heat it up, killing all the bacteria, and then ship it to Japan, where Tanabe uses it to make miracles happen in his kitchen. If you order Tanabe's dirt special, then you'll start off with potato starch and soil soup and a side salad sprinkled with dirt dressing. Your main meal would consist of an earthy risotto and sea bass, and to end it all, you'll dine on a dirt ice cream and dirt gratin. To be sure, Nikwita's Paz is a unique restaurant and probably the only place in the world that takes serve and turf, quite literally. Number 2. Visit an Ear Cleaning Parlor If your ears are a bit greasy, the chances are you'll probably reach for a Q-tip. However, things are a bit different in Japan. For a small fee, young ladies will clean your ears for you. Ear care is very important in Japanese society. In addition to aiding the auditory canal, it's believed ear cleanings improve skin health and also help with weight loss. In fact, clean ears are so important that some consider it a mother's duty to keep her kids and husband wax-free. But when those kids grow up, many of them frequent the ear cleaning parlors that have popped up all over Japan. Since there aren't any government regulations, anyone can start their own wax removal business, and professional ear cleaners only need 7 to 10 days worth of training before they can start poking around in your ear canal. If you visited an ear cleaning parlor, you'd first enter a room decorated in traditional Japanese fashion. A young woman wearing a kimono would make you a cup of tea and chat a bit before sitting on the floor. After putting your head on her lap, she'd lay a napkin over your face and whip out her mimikaki. Essentially, this is a pick made out of bamboo, metal, or plastic. The mimikaki comes equipped with a special scoop for scraping out stubborn chunks of earwax. Services generally last for 30 to 70 minutes and cost between $32 and $100. In addition to the cleaning, some parlors offer ear massages and even ear divinations. By examining the folds and flaps of an ear, workers claim they can actually predict your future. It probably won't come as a surprise that most ear salon clients are men. Many say that they seek out these peculiar parlors because having their ears cleaned reminds them of their childhoods. However, there's often a sexual element involved as well, and workers are allowed to walk away if they feel threatened by the customers. Sadly, though, sometimes things get out of hand, like in a 2009 case where a woman was stabbed to death for rejecting a client's advances. Fortunately, these incidents are few and far between, and ear cleaning parlors continue to exist on the bizarre border of nostalgia and sex. Number 1. Buy Crooked Teeth any single ladies in the audience with crooked teeth? Well, if so, you should jump on a plane to Japan. Overcrowded mouths, they are all the rage in the land of the rising sun, where snaggle-toothed girls are considered super cute. In fact, they're considered so attractive that many are intentionally wrecking their smiles in the name of beauty. The toothy style, known as Tsuke Yeba, became fashionable thanks to celebrities like pop singer Tomomi Itano. Inspired by their idol, trendy teens and even women in their 20s started visiting special clinics where dental beauticians built some truly bizarre bridgework. 
For $400, dentists will glue fake ivories onto real teeth, giving the impression that the molars are shoving the canines forward. And if a girl is unsure about this new look, well, she can just buy temporary teeth. However, lots of ladies still decide to go the permanent route. Evidently, this fanged fashion is so popular that there's even a girl band where all the members sport this style. But so what is it about crooked teeth that makes them so appealing? Well, according to the guys, these multi-layered grins make girls more approachable. Their imperfections just make it easier for dudes to strike up a conversation. On top of that, crooked teeth are often described as impish and give girls a childlike quality that some guys go for. While this style might sound strange to Westerners, is it any weirder than Botox injections and fake tans? Remember, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, or in this case, the mouth. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and do not forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, check out some of our videos from the archives over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.